Murray and the New York Yankees are making history. No team has ever been on a winning pace like the Yankees. Truly a dream season. The Texas Rangers are in a dogfight out west, led by RBI machine Juan Gonzalez, MVP candidate Pudge Rodriguez, and recently acquired third baseman Todd Zeal. This could be a preview of an October playoff showdown. The Rangers and Yankees are next on Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net. And this is Central Park in Manhattan, but not far away in the Bronx Yankees Stadium, the scene of the start of a four-game series between the Texas Rangers and the New York Yankees, two teams that lead their respective divisions. And the Yankees have lost only eight games in the house that Ruth built this year. Hello again, everyone. Dick Stockton along with Jeff Torborg. And uh, what a resounding year. We may never see another one like the Yankees are putting on, but the Texas Rangers are in a dogfight themselves. Boy, are they ever. They have to win their division. The Red Sox are having such an outstanding year that the wild card might be out of reach. So Texas has got to fight the Angels down to the end and win the thing. And the Rangers are very pleased to have back in their lineup Juan Gonzalez, who has been out the last three games with a strained neck. Well, they've really missed this guy. This is the big power in the middle lineup. The big producer leads the major leagues with so many RBIs. He makes things happen. He makes their club look entirely different when he's in there. You know, Jeff, it is mind-boggling that the Yankees are 58 games over 500 here at practically mid-August, but there are other records that they're shooting for as well. Well, it seems like every time we come to Yankee Stadium, they're looking for another record. You know, they've, they're on a pace right now with consecutive games with home runs. They're still a long way to go, but I wouldn't put anything past them. They've got eight players with 10-plus home runs. Chad Curtis is only one away from that, so these guys just keep right on going. And we've got an interesting pitching matchup, our Gillette matchup tonight. One of the top winners in the American League, Rick Helling, with 15 wins. And El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, the Cuban right-hander, on the mound for the Yankees. Well, these two guys have really made impact this year with their teams. Helling has really made it big. He's a power pitcher. Hernandez, on the other hand, is a rookie in the major leagues, but he really knows how to pitch. All right, we've got stars galore in this game as the Rangers go against the New York Yankees. Juan Gonzalez, who's chasing the all-time RBI leadership, Hack Wilson. And Derek Jeter, very steady shortstop. Remember, these two teams could very well meet in the first round of the playoffs. Coming up, Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net. Desert RBI, one team, one company, one local to global connection. And here at Yankee Stadium on an overcast evening, but pleasant temperature-wise, the Texas Rangers and the New York Yankees get set to battle on Fox Sports Net. And here are our Toyota starting lineups. First for the Texas Rangers, leading off in center field, Tom Goodwin. Mark McLemore will be at second base, followed by Rusty Greer in left field. Juan Gonzalez, the DH, back in the lineup after missing the last three. Will Clark having a fine year is at first base. Hud Rodriguez behind the plate. Todd Zeal at third. Mike Sims will be the right fielder. And Royce Clayton batting ninth at shortstop. And uh, on the mound tonight, El Duque. Orlando Hernandez and another great addition to uh, what has been an outstanding starting staff Jeff boy Dick this guy can really pitch I've watched him pitch a number of games his numbers are terrific He's got a great delivery and he's a great athlete this guy has really been an asset to this Yankee ball club and here is the uh, Yankee defense behind them uh, particularly uh, Paul O'Neill in right field there they are this is a good defensive team they're ranked fourth in the American League and they're getting even better the middle of the of any team's strength has to be the middle of the infield and Jeter and Knobloch are excellent. Bernie Williams and center fielders are as good as, as it, it comes especially playing this big center field here at Yankee Stadium. Tino Martinez has become an outstanding first baseman. This is a good ball club. And there is O'Neill in right field and uh, the amazing thing is that uh, Reigns and Strawberry have had to play uh, position spots. And uh, they have done pretty well as the Yankees have not beaten themselves. And let's take a closer look at Orlando Hernandez. This guy pitches off his breaking stuff, Dick. You don't see too many guys do that. He's a veteran of international baseball. He's got a good fastball, two of them, in fact, a cross seamer and a four seamer. When he rides up in the zone, he has a good changeup. He throws some, so many darn arm angles. You don't know where he's coming from with a high leg kick, makes him even more deceptive. And the first pitch of the game is a fastball for a strike. 
Tom Goodwin who's hitting 293 with uh, 17 runs batted in tied for sixth in the American League with 31 stolen bases so a threat if he should get on as he fouls it back and El Duque quickly ahead of the Rangers leadoff hitter Owen 2. Well when you look at El Duque he's a there's a debate on how old he is some say he's 32 from a bubblegum card he had when he was in the Cuban <laughs> national team. There's the breaking pitch and uh, he's listed at 28 and uh, since when do bubblegum cards become the more accurate of the records. I don't know that came first though. <laughs> oh, well. I, that was from a couple years ago. Good point by you. <laughs> there he is uh, making his 13th major league start and his first against the Texas Rangers. And again he misses with the breaking ball and the count is even two balls and two strikes. There is Johnny Oates the manager of the Rangers who currently lead the Anaheim Angels by a half a game in the West. And there's a looper back to the mound caught by Hernandez for the first out of the game. And uh, Jeff's so right when he talks about the urgency of the Texas Rangers. If they win the West, they're in the playoffs. If they lose, they probably don't make postseason. That's an amazing stat when you think about it. But the Red Sox, and of course, they're the ones that have to be wondering what's going on with the second best record in the American League and find themselves so far behind the Yankees, they can barely see them at 18 and a half games behind. Here is switch hitting second baseman Mark McLemore who has struggled as of late at the plate. And there is the first pitch outside ball one. And of course as a Cuban right hander you wonder whether El Duque uh, learned something from El Tiante who not only pitched for the Indians Yankees and Red Sox but also was known for the delivery from uh, countless yes. places. Yes. Boy what a good guy to learn from if you could have that kind of stuff. This kid having watched El Duque pitch really has a nice delivery he really gets set over the mound and he he has this high leg kick and you can see when he kicks his left leg up under him it gets him bouncing balanced he comes up with that left leg up into this position like this once he gets up now he can head to the plate now see he's balanced and he can go this way he's not going too soon and it really is a deceptive delivery. 3 0 pitch was over for a strike now coming back three and one and a fastball and that was a good hitters pitch right there. McLemore fouls it away and the count is full three balls and two strikes. Yankee pitching coach Mel Stottlemyre reunited with his son Todd Stottlemyre a recent pickup by the Rangers who strengthened the left side of their infield and their pitching by getting Todd Stottlemyre from the Cardinals. Fastball on the outside corner and McLemore goes down two away. Well, Mark McLemore has been struggling lately after he played in artificial turf it hurt his legs a little bit but this is a nasty pitch that's scooting away on the outside part of the plate and you can see McLemore looking for it doesn't think he can reach it and probably could not but this was a low arm angle delivery that kept going away from him. Here's Rusty Greer with two outs and he takes a call strike. So McLemore who was uh, ahead three and oh on the count. Punched out by El Duque and that was his uh, 80th strikeout of the year. That pitch rides outside one ball and one strike to the Rangers left fielder hitting 296 with 74 runs batted in. Infield playing around to the left for the left handed hitter and he golfs a fastball out of play so the count one and two. I think that was a good call that was that fastball that he goes with two seams and he makes it sink. He can also grab the ball across the seams and ride it up in the strike zone. And you never know what arm angle he's coming from. Side arm, overhand, three quarters. Here's the one two pitch. And the count even two and two. The Rangers, one and three against the Yankees this season. Lost to the Yankees twice in Arlington early in May, and then they split two in mid May here at Yankee Stadium. And the count is full to Greer, three and two on deck. Juan Gonzalez. So if Greer can get aboard, we'll see. The Major League's RBI King with 119 get a shot here in the first. Here is the 3-2 pitch and that might have been ball four but uh, Greer fouls it off into the Yankee dugout. Like you just made the point about the man is on deck and as a catcher and a pitcher you look to see who's on deck you know who's standing there obviously everybody in the ballpark knows who's standing there you would rather get the hitter in front of him. And a fastball is lined to left center field coming on over his range he dives and he the catch. Tim Raines with a diving catch going to his left and a lot of field to cover and a fine defensive play as the Yankees retire the Rangers in order and an early defensive gem by Tim Raines.
Gains in the dugout after that outstanding defensive play and uh, the Yankees coming up in the first inning and now the uh, Toyota lineups. This is the Yankee batting order tonight against Rick Helling. Chuck Knobloch leading off at second. Derek Jeter at short. Paul O'Neill in right field and Bernie Williams the American League leading hitter batting cleanup in center field. Tino Martinez is at first. Darryl Strawberry the DH tonight. He has been red hot. Tim Raines will be in left. Jorge Posada behind the plate and Scott Brocious at third batting ninth. Brocious with five RBIs in the win over Minnesota last night matching his career high and Rick Helling having a whale of a year 15 and six as we take a look at his record. Well his numbers are very good and he's really coming together. He's a big strong kid who throws hard and is really getting the feel of pitching at the major league level. Chuck Knobloch looks at strike one Helling. Uh, Pitching to Knobloch, who's hitting 250, 15 homers, 55 RBIs. Well below his uh, career average is Chuck Knobloch. But he says that he would never trade in the experience he's having with the Yankees this year. It has been one to, to remember. And don't forget, he was on a world championship team with the Twins. Yes, as a rookie. That's when he first came up. This guy can really play, and he adds an unbelievable dimension to this Yankee ball club at the front end of their lineup. He gets jammed and pops it up in foul territory. Rodriguez and Zeal give chase, and Todd Zeal on the edge of the Rangers' dugout makes the catch for out number one. Let's take a look, to Jeff, at the rest of the Rangers' defense. Well, when you look at this defense, of course, it's anchored by Pudge Rodriguez, six time gold glover. Boy, he's special behind the plate. He's not having as great a year defensively as he is capable of, but he's still better than anybody else in the game, probably. But the Texas defense had not been good. Johnny Oates was not happy with it, so they went out and got Royce Clayton and Todd Zeal to anchor the left side of their infield. They just didn't have much range on that side of the field, and they feel like they're a better ball club now as a result of those trades. So here's one team really making moves to assure that they can get into postseason. There is Zeal, the former Florida Marlin. Clayton came over from the St. Louis Cardinals, and the first pitch to Derek Jeter is over for a strike. Jeter, sixth in the American League. With a 324 batting average. Remember, he was on the disabled list in June. At the same time, Bernie Williams was out, and that was a time that the Yankees, who started off hot offensively, started to dip, but the starting pitching came into groove then. Boy, did it ever. That shows how deep this team is, and they're so well balanced. Breaking ball is a chop foul, one and two. When you think about this Yankee team, and the addition of Knobloch really sewed up the defense. He struggled a little bit throwing, but he adds a dimension to the front end of the order. He can steal. Joe Torre can do anything with this lineup that he wants to do because of the fact this club can put the ball in play. They're not a, a free swinging team. They're really not the Bronx Bombers of the past. These guys can play the little game and, and very effectively. Hellings one two pitch a breaking ball fly ball to right field and drifting out of play and you really said it. It would be hard to imagine that a team that is 58 games over 500 Jeff is not a team that you can really compare to other great teams. I mean you can really down the line and you look at the roster man for man they don't match up but as a team with chemistry they do in a big way. Boy do they ever and I think Joe Torre has a lot to do with that Brian Cashman and of course Bob Watson before him. They have a great coaching staff here to go for Joe and it really is quite a unit. One two pitch is grounded to shortstop and Royce Clayton and safe at first base Clayton's throw offline and Will Clark try to tag Jader, Jeter, and uh, he is on at first base. And it should go, and it will go as a throwing error charge to Royce Clayton. There it is, the throw off line, and uh, Clark tried to make the tag. Well, Clayton is such a good athlete with a good arm, and the ball dropped. I think the runner would have been out if Will Clark could have held on to it as he made the tag. And that's why it became an error. It was just one of those. He rushed the throw a little bit. And again, why did he do it? Because he knew he had speed and Jeter flying out of that box. Here's Paul O'Neill. With one out and uh, Jeter on at first base. Jeter with 24 stolen bases this year and a home run swing and miss by O'Neill. O'Neill batting 316, ninth in the American League in hitting. In fact, Jeter, O'Neill, and Williams batting in the two, three, and four slots. Are amongst the top 10 hitters in the league. Now that gives you a little idea why this club is winning, and it's no coincidence that the Yankees started winning, really started to make a comeback in the early 90s when this guy got here. Paul O'Neill came over from the Reds, and this ball club has been going ever since. Lays off the pitch up, one ball and one strike. <laughs> 
When he was first offered around baseball a little bit, I should say, and that doesn't sound very good. It sounds like a piece of meat, but I was managing the Mets, and he was offered to the Mets, and somebody said to me, well, he doesn't hit left-handed pitching real well. He hit 218. So the Yankees trade for him, and all of a sudden, he becomes one of the, the key people in their whole lineup over the rest of the years that he's been here. Very steady, and of course, we, uh, you've also chronicled uh, the value he has as a right fielder. Mm -hmm. And also, he brings another... He brings another intangible. He has got fire in his belly. He gets mad at himself. He tears up water coolers, but boy, does this guy want to win. Jeter, stolen base numbers. Impressive. Willie Randolph, the third base coach, flashing the signs. Hellings 2 1 pitch. The runner doesn't go, and the count 3 and 1. Jeter, as we saw with 24 stolen bases, Knobloch, who did not get on with 23, are the first middle infielder tandem that the Yankees have ever had each with 20 stolen bases or more. Well that's amazing and you look at O'Neill he's got 13 and 14 attempts so you know the front end of the order can run but Jeter might be able to run on Helling not so much on Rodriguez but on Helling. There he goes the runner goes the three one pitch taken for ball four so uh, a moot throw down a second as uh, O'Neill draws the walk and now runners are at first and second watch it. So runners at first and second the Yankees with a first inning threat. Let's take a closer look Jeff now at uh, Rick Helling coming in with a 15 and 6 record. Well he's what you call a, a fly ball pitcher. He gets the ball up in the strike zone because he throws a cross seam fastball. He doesn't make the ball sink. He's got a good curveball. It's kind of like a slurve. It doesn't go straight down. It goes down and across. He's got a cutter that he'll use occasionally and a circle changeup. But as we just saw, the Yankees think they can run against Helling, not so much on Ivan Rodriguez, who throws so beautifully, but Helling takes a little time getting the ball to the plate. Here's Bernie Williams, the American League batting leader with an average of 352, the switch hitter, and he takes a strike on the inside corner. Fine pitch by Helling, knee high on the inside edge. Boy, you call it Dick. This is one thing that Dick Bosman, the pitching coach of the Rangers, really has worked with Rick Helling to do is get the ball down in the strike zone. Prior to this, he would be up in the middle of the strike zone, up too high too often. And there's Dick sitting in the Texas Ranger dugout. A very good pitcher in his own right, pitched a no-hitter back in 1974 for Cleveland. Here's the 0-1 pitch. And it's inside and of course Johnny Oates the manager and Dick Bosman were uh, together in Baltimore when uh, they were with the Orioles for a spell. Uh, Johnny Oates and Dick Bosman work so well together of course they should Johnny Oates is a catcher. Dick Bosman a former pitcher but Johnny Oates is one of the probably most unheralded managers in baseball of course he shared the manager of the year award a couple years ago with Joe Torre and deservedly so when the Rangers finally broke through to go into postseason with a division championship in 1996 and or 19 yes 1996 in Texas. Tino Martinez on deck and Helling is down low two balls and a strike to Bernie Williams. Helling uh, finished last year with uh, Texas had been with the Florida Marlins so he did not have a chance to uh, be on the roster that uh, ultimately won the world championship. No he had been a number one draft choice of the Rangers and then he got traded away and then brought back this kid's a tough kid he's out of Stanford. Real aggressive pitcher. Setting up on the outside of the zone. Here goes Jeter trying to steal on the throw. He got him. Great throw by Pudge Rodriguez to Todd Zeal who puts the tag on Derek Jeter. And the Jeter got a good jump. But it was a bullet throw and Jeter is out. Holding it first is Paul O'Neill. Well you better know you can make it when you have a left handed hitter up and with Pudge Rodriguez throwing because you got an open shot at him. And there's the ball and the tag applied by Zeal. But look at it knee on the ground. Coming in with it. Uh oh. His hand got in there before the tag did. The ball actually beat him, but his hand got in on the base before he was tagged. Well, unfortunately, Larry Young doesn't have slow motion replay. If That's he did, exactly he might have right. had a different decision. Well, you're talking about one of the best umpires in the American League, too, Larry Young. And so it was one of those plays bang, bang. The ball had beat him. And when the ball gets there early, they usually you would call him out. He called it as he saw it. Three and one the count to Bernie Williams. So O'Neill, the lone base runner on it first. Outfield and infield playing straight away and the pitch is chopped back. Count is full to Williams. Three balls and two strikes. The Yankees having a dream year. Their record here at Yankee Stadium. An incredible 45 wins and only eight losses. They're 42 and 21 so they're 667 on the road. That is better than virtually every 
home team's record in all of baseball. I don't know if there are any words to describe this. I mean, that what they're doing is just almost impossible. 3 2 pitch, O'Neill goes, base hit to right field. And O'Neill will stop at second base, retrieved by Mike Sims. So Bernie Williams, leading the American League in hitting, gets the first hit of the ball game. And the, the Yankees with first and second. Now there's the um, projection right now over 162 games. The Yankees, if they continue with this pace, would win 122 games. Remember the all-time record, the Chicago Cubs back in aught six. <laughs> Jeff Torborg was in the minors back then. <laughs> Only 116 wins at that time. Just kidding, Jeff. <laughs> and I think people know that. Here's Tino Martinez with two on and two out. That's amazing. 116, the all-time win total. And a line drive, base hit to right field. They're going to wave him in. Here comes O'Neill, and the throw offline. The run scores, and Rodriguez now has Martinez in a rundown. They got to watch Williams, and he went out of the path. He stepped out of the path, and he is out. Out of the baseline, and so they're going to call Martinez out, and that'll retire the side. But the base hit by Tino Martinez brings home O'Neill, and after one inning here at Yankee Stadium, as Martinez appeals it, the Yankees lead the Rangers one to nothing. Yankees take a one nothing lead. Tino Martinez with his 93rd run batted in on a bizarre inning-ending play, Jeff. Well Tino Martinez was looking at the throw and he saw that it went all the way through to the catcher so he rounded first base and they got him in a rundown. So you had him in the rundown you had Bernie Williams at over at third base waiting to go and you see the second base umpire is Drew Coble the crew chief he's calling him safe. Now he's overruled by the first base umpire Ed Hitcox. Now you don't see that very often a younger umpire overruling the crew chief but it's important to get the play right and then they talked about it after the inning was over. So we go to the second inning the Yankees lead one nothing and Juan Gonzalez back in the starting lineup takes a call strike from Orlando Hernandez Gonzalez who has missed the last three games he had muscle spasms in the left side of his neck. He has not been in the lineup in nine of the last 14 one hundred and nineteen runs batted in. And the all time record uh, Hack Wilson of the Cubs one hundred and ninety. So uh, Juan Gonzalez. You look at all of the uh, great slugging uh, goals, the Mark McGuire's, the Sosa's, the Griffey's, and you could put Gonzalez in that category. Absolutely. This guy can really hit. Swing and a miss on a good slider and the count one and two. You just wonder how, how good he's going to be. He's been hurt with a bad neck. And when you have a bad neck, you're not fluid in swinging. He was not even in the lineup initially tonight. They wanted to see how he took batting practice. Well, then face a pitcher like El Duque, who has the rest of the league's right handers hitting about 140 against him, it's going to be awful tough on Gonzalez. Here's the one two pitch, and he strikes out. You know, just looking at El Duque, he could give you a stiff neck right there just by watching the pitcher. <laughs> So there's one away here in the second. Well, next week on Baseball Thursday, are the Yankees the greatest team of all time? The Bombers' historic season rolls on in Minnesota, or the Angels charging towards a playoff berth as the home stretch kicks off against Detroit. Check local listings for the game in your area. One away, the second strikeout for Orlando Hernandez, now facing Will Clark. Clark looks at a changeup and it misses ball one. Clark's totals in the RBIs and home runs. He has 16 homers, 76 runs driven in, are the most he's had in the last three seasons. And a 306 batting average fouls it off one and one. You know, it's a shame to watch his skills diminished by injury. He's had all sorts of injuries, and the big one was his right elbow was injured. When you're a left handed hitter, you can't get extension with your front arm. If you lose the strength and, and have a stiffness in the elbow, this guy was one of the game's best hitters. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and the count one ball and the two strikes. And here uh, is how Will Clark has upped his numbers. Well, he's swinging the bat better now than he has, and part of that it takes a long time, especially when you get older, to get over certain injuries, especially surgery. And those were totals of 1996 and seven. He strikes out. The tag put on. By Posada, so 
El Duque has struck out three of the first five batters he's faced. Two gone. This guy is amazing. You know, you, you keep talking about a man who's never pitched in the major leagues before. He's pitching great international baseball with Cuba, but he can throw his breaking ball over at any time, and this is the straight downer. Now, he'll drop down and throw that from the side as well. He throws it like that on the top, as he did to Will Clark to left-handers. You see Will shaking his head. It's a tough pitch to lay off. Pud Rodriguez, the batter, with two away. And uh, tries to check his swing. And he cannot do it as first base umpire Ed Hickox indicates that Rodriguez did swing. So strike one to Pudge, fifth in the American League with a 326 average, and second with 35 doubles, having a big offensive year and always one of the best behind the plate. And you can see the Rangers, uh, Jeff, are unquestionably dazzled and fooled by the uh, multi deliveries of uh, Hernandez absolutely and of course the first time around the lineup they have never faced him before and they don't know where the ball is coming from and as we mentioned earlier he pitches off his curveball in other words he uses his curveball like other people use their fastball one ball and two strikes now to Rodriguez here is Rodriguez or I should say Hernandez who defected from Cuba in December of 97 he was picked up by the U.S. Coast Guard three days after landing on a Caribbean island and he established residence in Costa Rica. And as you mentioned, star of the Cuba's national team and now wearing pin pinstripes in a big year. Breaking ball misses away, and the count is two and two. You know, the people that are around him say he has his perspective on life so in gear. Now, can you imagine three days in a small 17 foot boat? The, he said that if it had been choppy seas, they would have drowned. Now, you know, here's a guy that just appreciates everything he's being a part of now. 2-2 pitch, fastball on the outside corner. He came at Rodriguez's sidearm, and El Duque strikes out the side here in the second. Four strikeouts in two innings. Uh, this guy is unbelievable, and so far the Rangers don't like what they've seen. And Jeff Torborg as the Texas Rangers trail the Yankees 1-0, and the Yankees coming up in the bottom of the second inning. Bud Rodriguez who threw out Derek Jeter trying to steal third and Will Clark hopes that he can make it to postseason in the American League this year with the Texas Rangers going in with a half game lead over Anaheim in the West. Here's Darryl Strawberry has been scalding as of late the Yankee DH misses a good fastball from Helling strike one. So you believe Strawberry uh, you can't get him out of the lineup he is uh, blistered right handed pitching to a fairly well 21 homers 51 runs batted in hits this high in the air to left field but a play for Rusty Greer and there's one away well he has been hot he's got one of the prettiest swings and of course I don't think you ever say the right hander has a pretty swing but most left handers do it but he has got uniquely a smooth swing lifts the leg and, and he's, he's a pleasure to watch take batting practice here's another guy who's got his life in gear you know he had such difficult times he appreciates everything now on a day to day basis you talk about this Yankee ball club you talk about chemistry before yes they have a special chemistry on this team the role players know what expected of them nobody complains whatever Joe wants they say Boy, when do you hear that that's terrific and the players like coming in the clubhouse they support each other and that's something you just uh, can't will it has to be there here's Tim Raines he fouls off the first pitch Raines with a tremendous catch to end the Ranger first as he robbed Rusty Greer of extra bases with this catch well, this was a very nice play in the alley now Tim played for me when I managed the White Sox and he likes to dive for the ball he's on his knees a lot in the outfield he feels comfortable lower looking at the ball and he made a great play on that his speed outran it takes a strike 0 and 2 so Reigns and Strawberry and you know it has not been an easy assignment for Joe Torrey to juggle those two as DH is in the field when you have an O'Neill and a healthy Bernie Williams you're not kidding add Chad Curtis to that and right. here comes Chili Davis going to be available next week. That's right. Chili Davis who has had the ankle surgery has uh, been uh, taking batting practice expected to be uh, activated Monday against the Kansas City Royals. But uh, Joe Torrey has uh, done the juggling job as uh, well as you could expect of any manager. Here's the one two pitch. And Rodriguez thought he had him with the breaking ball but it is ball two two and two. And there's third base uh, umpire Larry Young indicating that Reigns did not go around. 
Now that's a tough play as a catcher you try to stay down as much as you can on any breaking ball you don't want to come up in front of the umpire but Pudge Rodriguez thought that was a strike and got up he was going to throw the ball around the infield. One out nobody on base for the Yankees here in the second inning. Fastball fouled off and the count remains two balls and two strikes. You know when you look at the makeup of this ball club and you think of a Tim Raines Tim missed most of last year he was rehabbing the Yankees stayed with him and he stayed with his rehab he came up near the end of the year and really was a force for him and he just knows his role great on the club. You know he has a lot of fun playing this game this guy has had a heck of a career I mean Tim Raines was a star in his own right with Montreal traded we traded for him with the White Sox we traded Barry Jones and Yvonne Calderon over to Montreal for him and it took him a while to get used to the American League but he's had a heck of a career and a great stolen base uh, came oh, early yes. in his career he only has seven this year and there is a curveball on the inside corner and rain goes down and that is the first strikeout for Helling two away here in the Yankees second well every night on Fox Sports Net it's Fox Sports News primetime all the scores all the highlights and all the breaking stories covering your hometown team seven nights a week we are there Fox Sports News primetime. So there are two gone here in the second inning and that'll bring up Jorge Posada. Young switch hitting catcher batting 289 and he takes down low ball one. Talk about the spirit and chemistry. Well, Joe Girardi, who was the catcher when the Yankees won the World Series two years ago, has spent a lot of time in the tutoring Posada virtually every day. And uh, how often do you see that? Uh, that's a non envy, I would say, by the veteran Girardi. No, I agree. That's the way Johnny Roseboro with the Dodgers was for me. You know, a veteran who knew there was a young kid coming along, tried to help him as much as he could. Posada's going to be a star in this game. Anytime you get a switch hitting catcher uh, on top of that normally you're just happy to get a left hand hitting catcher and especially with the Yankees anytime you get a left hander with power in this ballpark and there's Joe Girardi sitting with Don Zimmer who was his manager incidentally when he came to the big legs back in 89 mm -hmm. but Girardi out of uh, Northwestern has been great with this young catcher Girardi caught uh, David Cohn last uh, game yesterday afternoon and uh, Posada did not play. Girardi has been uh, Cone's uh, personal receiver. Two balls and two strikes to Jorge Posada, and there's a drive hit deep to right field near the foul pole, and foul out of play. That had a chance for a while, and uh, drifted about foul by 15 feet. This kid has been on everybody's mind when you started last year. Uh, to have any type of trade talk with the Yankees one of the first names any of the other teams would ask for when the Yankees were looking for a pitcher looking for help was Posada and Posada called out on strike so Helling gets into the strikeout derby by getting two Yankees on called third strikes so we go to the third here at the stadium the Yankees lead the Rangers one to nothing. I never give in to a play. You know, sometimes the coach says, look, it's a bad play. Just throw it away or take the sack. I don't like to hear that. I think every single time I drop back, I can throw a touchdown. That's also got me in trouble sometimes. But I think if you study hard enough and you prepare hard enough and you believe that you can make every play, that you'll make a lot more good plays than bad plays. Some guys are just willing to give in, and I'm not. It's a Fox NFL special on your local Fox station. To his right. You know, we talked before about the Yankee coaching staff. What a great coaching staff. Mel Stoudemire was a star here. Don Zimmer, of course, a major league manager in several stops, just an outstanding baseball guy. But then you have Willie Randolph and Chris Shambliss, <laughs> Yankee, former Yankee star. So if it's tough to play in New York City, these guys obviously can settle people down. And they've done that with uh, several of the Yankees who have struggled. Scott Brocious, as of late, who came out of it yesterday. Here is Mike Sims. The right fielder and Sims takes strike one. Now Sims has been the designated hitter against the left handed hitters. Lee Stevens put on the uh, disabled list but uh, he's had to play against righties as well and he was three for four against uh, the Indians yesterday. So he has hit some right handed hitters. Check swing but it's over for a strike going two. 
He hasn't seen too many that look like this. <laughs> no. Yesterday he faced uh, Cologne from Cleveland, and you're talking about a guy who's a drop and drive straight over the plate, which, as you can see, Sims is a big guy, and you can see he's had some outstanding home run ratio numbers this year. One every 10 at bats. Not this time. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So uh, that is strikeout number five for El Duque, and there's one gone with one on here in the Ranger third. Now here's the pitch. You see him tuck in, drop way down. That's way down from the side, and that was a breaking ball. That's almost not fair to a hitter who hasn't seen you in a while, and all he's seen in this at bat were sidearm fastballs, and then to see this thing. Well, that was a terrible looking swing. I had a couple of those in my career. But, you know, that's what happens when you can't reach the ball. You don't know where it's coming from. None that I remember, however. <laughs> Royce Clayton, a swing and a miss. Strike one. Clayton, who came over from the Cardinals, along with uh, Todd Stottlemyre. El Duque, already with five strikeouts, is a season's high nine strikeouts on two occasions against Montreal June the 9th and the Mets on the 28th of June. He's got five already, and he's ahead of Clayton 0 and 1. Clayton batting ninth tonight. There's the base runner, Todd Zia. Check swing, and it's a ball, one and one. You know, you mentioned something before, the fear factor. A lot of people say, well, major leaguers aren't afraid. When you've got a guy out there throwing in the 90 mile an hour range, and you don't know where to look for the ball, good hitters look for a slot where they see the ball come out of a guy's hand. Well, this guy's slot is a big one. It's from about behind his ear all the way down to behind his left leg. I mean, this guy really has a strange delivery. Here's the 1 1 pitch, sidearm pitch, foul back. Well, the fear factor, the fear of failure, is one of the great incentives for a lot of players in all sports. And I never realized that, not uh, having played to the level that you, you played or close to it, but I realized it in my time in Boston with the Red Sox when they were in those pennant races with the Yankees. In 77 and 78 that uh, I remember pitchers Dick Drago for one saying I was scared to death out there fear and that was the incentive. Well that's true too the fear of failure but the physical fear of a guy hitting you in the coconut with one of those errant tosses you know you're just not sure whether you can keep your rear end in on it. Ah yes. Here's the one two pitch. And a ground ball to second base Knobloch to Jeter and the Yankees turn the double play and end the third inning. So the leadoff walk goes by the boards and after two and a half innings and the Yankees lead the Rangers one to nothing on this four six three double play to end the third. And welcome back to baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net. These kids didn't need a sheet or a sign they just needed uh, themselves for NY there's the Y the other. Uh, Young boy has the end and that's enough for him. He's putting his Bernie Williams uh, shirt on now. A little cool for that at this stage. Scott Brocious leading off the bottom of the third inning takes strike one. Brocious batting 295, 14 homers, 74 runs batted in. Hit his 14th homer yesterday, a 412 foot bomb, and matched his uh, major league high with five runs driven in. He had been slumping prior to that. He had been in. It Bench coach Don Zimmer said to him, hey, relax, sit back and enjoy what's going on here. This is a special year. And coming from Zim, it, Scott said it relaxed him. 0 oh, 2 pitch grounded into the hole and a base hit for Brocious to start the Yankee third. It did relax him. He came over from Oakland in the trade for Kenny Rogers. Yankees with their third hit of the game. Well, I was watching that game yesterday and he had a hanging curveball into the bullpen in left center field. He's very strong. The Yankees got him this year really for defensive purposes. He had an off year last year with Oakland and they didn't know what they were going to get out of him. He ends up making the all star team this year. And when his uh, batting average started to slip uh, he let his uh, defensive play affect him as well and that's as you pointed out where Don Zimmer settled him down. Here's Chuck Knobloch fouled out to third baseman Todd Zeal his first time up. Brocious on held on by Clark. One and oh the count to Knobloch. Now it's very interesting to look at Chuck Knobloch. He's he's a guy who when he first came up did nothing but hit the ball to right field. He's an outstanding high ball hitter. He is not afraid to go deep in the count. But since he's gotten older and stronger he's learned to pull the ball with power. Houston native. 
World Series in his rookie year back in 91 with the Twins. One ball and one strike. While the Yankees have made uh, some fortuitous trades and some free agent signings, they seem to be more coming up through the ranks now, more homegrown talent on the club than ever before. Absolutely, the key to this organization and this ball club right now. Just look at shortstop and Jeter and Bernie Williams in center field. They are homegrown people. Here's the one-one pitch. It's a strike, curveball. There's Bernie Williams, and so you look at uh, some of the young players. Jeter, who's uh, on deck. You know, there's some, been some talk I heard yesterday watching the broadcast, the telecast, that Jeter might be considered to be the next Yankee captain. That is really an honor. There haven't been that many here. Boy, to be the captain of the Yankees, those pinstripes on the third base coach, Willie Randolph, of course, one of those. A lot of responsibility in that assignment. Curveball and Rodriguez smothers it and has no throw. And the knob block will take ball two and Brocious in at second base. And that uh, will be a wild pitch. And that is the tenth wild pitch of the year. And uh, if uh, Helling has any kind of shortcomings, it is that he is amongst the American League leaders in uh, wild pitches. He is for two reasons. First of all, he's got that breaking ball that breaks wide sometimes, and when you're trying to keep it down, tends to, to bounce the ball. But that was good base running by Brocious. He re he recognized that that ball was going into the dirt. You know, when you have a catcher that throws the ball as Rodriguez, a lot of times you hesitate to take the extra base. And off the fist, a one hopper to Mclemore. He'll make the play to retire Knobloch as Brocious goes to third, and there's one away here in the third inning. Well, tonight at midnight, check out The Last Word with Jim Rome in L.A. and a live studio audience at the All-Star Cafe in New York. It's epic sports talk by Coastal and interactive. Join Romy as he mixes it up with the biggest names in sports. The Last Word tonight at midnight. Check your local listings. Well, Dick, we talked about how the Yankees can play little ball or they can play inside baseball. That was Chuck Knobloch shooting that ball to right side of the infield in order to get Brosis to third base. That is the way that this team plays the game. They do the things right that helps win ball game. Derek Jeter reached on an error by Royce Clayton. The infield playing in with a runner at third and the first pitch up high ball one. So in case uh, Jeter had any idea for uh, laying one down. In a squeeze situation, that's the best way to uh, <laughs> nullify that, Jeff. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you got a, any thought they might squeeze, you don't want to pitch out, throw toward the hitter, and get him out of there. Good pitch by Helling as he jams Jeter, and the count one and one. Well, you know, the book on Jeter is to pitch him hard in, but you know, he's amazing. He can get his hands inside the ball. He inside outs the ball to the right field a lot, but if you keep pitching him in there, he'll get the head of the bat out and he'll hit a home run. Now, he's got good power. And of course, he's got his. Career high now, but this guy is a very talented shortstop. 6'3, 195 pounds, one of the new breed of big shortstops like Alec Rodriguez and mm -hmm. Garcia Parra. He has 14 home runs, 58 runs batted in. Pretty good for a shortstop hitting in the number two slot. Reaches out and a fly ball to right field. Sims will make the catch. Tagging up his Brocious. He'll come in and score, and the Yankees lead it two to nothing. So just as uh, Jeff indicated, you couldn't have been more on the nose than that. Jeter going to the opposite field deep enough to get in Brocious with the second Yankee run for Derek Jeter, his 59th run driven in. Well, that's a Yankee manufactured run. Scott Brocious got the base hit, and then he went to second base on the ball. It didn't get away from Pudge Rodriguez very much. Got him over. Not block, and here's the breaking ball out of way, and all Jeter was trying to do was put the ball in play far enough to right field to score Brocious from third, which he did. Yankees leading two to nothing and uh, Paul O'Neill the hitter and he takes a strike from Rick Helling so the Yankees lead two to nothing setting a major league record now they have uh, taken the lead in 42 consecutive games the last time the Yankees did not have a lead in the ball game was back on June 28th when they were beaten by the New York Mets two to one that is a phenomenal you really think about it a phenomenal number 42 straight games the Yankees have been in front. <laughs> well we said in the open every time we come in here there's a new record they're shooting at or breaking it's just an incredible year. No balls and two strikes with the bases empty the Yankees with a run in and a changeup swung on and missed 
strike three but the Yankees get another run and after three here at Yankee Stadium the Yankees lead the Texas Rangers two to nothing. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Gillette Mach 3, the first triple blade razor. And welcome back to Yankee Stadium. Johnny Oates, Texas Rangers, who are battling the Anaheim Angels for the American League West first place lead. They lead by half a game, but as uh, Jeff pointed out early on, the Boston Red Sox seem to have the wild card salted away at this point. So it's first base first place or no count for Texas and here is Tom Goodwin up for the second time as he takes ball one Goodman hit a soft liner back to Hernandez to start the game. Fastball fouled off to the left and it's one and one third baseman Brosh is playing in on the grass at third. You know the first time I saw a third baseman play right on top of a left handed speed hitter was when Pete Rose played way up on Mickey Rivers in the 76 World Series. He almost challenged you to hit the ball down there. It was one of those things he went right up in his face said OK try to hit it here and it took you to take it right out of your game. Remember that brother Rivers used to tomahawk the ball to try to get it past <laughs> the third baseman. Fly ball down the left field line Tim Raines makes the catch for out number one here in the fourth inning. Well, the Braves and the Padres going at it in the top of the seventh inning with Atlanta leading 3 0. Chipper Jones hit a solo homer to right field, his 29th of the year off of Scott Sanders, and the Atlanta Braves go on and beat the San Diego Padres by a score of 5 0. A lot of people anticipating a possible World Series confrontation between the Braves and the Yankees who clashed two years ago. Here is uh, Mark McLemore looks at a curveball for a strike. He was caught looking in the first inning. One ball and one strike. The only amazing thing is that the Yankees can uh, go on and win 122 or whatever they do, and then you're at the mercy of a short series. After That's that. right. It's a new season. You have to start all over again. You're absolutely right. Fastball in the air deep to right center field Bernie Williams looking up and it's off the wall and McLemore will go in the second with a double and the first hit of the game for the Rangers off of uh, Hernandez a one out double here in the fourth inning and that was scalded that was hit and remember what we said in the beginning of the game Hernandez has had some trouble against left handed hitters. Not against right handers left handers and here's a pitch that he leaves right in the middle of the plate and Mark McLemore makes him pay for it. Remember also now the Rangers have been around the lineup once they've seen this is the second time for the hitters to see him and maybe it will help him a little bit but left handers have a definite advantage against El Duque. Two to one the Yankees lead but a runner at second with one out and the first pitch to Rusty Greer misses one and oh Greer was robbed of extra bases. By Tim Raines, who made a diving catch in left center field. That was back in the first inning, and uh, El Duque stepping off the rubber. There you see uh, how left handers have uh, been successful against Hernandez, hitting 315 with five home runs. A sharp contrast to what righties have accomplished. One out, one and oh, the count to Greer with Gonzalez on deck. That pitch just down low, two and oh. You know Dick you can see why he has much more trouble with left handers he throws from a low arm angle the low arm angle really bothers right handed hitters because you can't see the ball coming at you or where it's coming from a left hander has a longer chance or more of a view to see it coming and from the side doesn't hurt him that much balls behind three and oh three balls and no strikes and a rear one pitch away from uh, walking and Gonzalez coming up uh, next so uh, you don't want to fool around here with Gonzalez and have him come up with the two runners on base or you're not kidding except he's right handed now he might feel a little more comfortable after that last at bat he had against him. And that pitch. misses ball four and uh, Rangers now with the tying runs on base. Well as we were talking about if you take a look at El Duque's delivery from behind from center field his arm angle is very low somewhere down in this area. So it doesn't up in here as high as he gets it doesn't fool the left handed hitter as much. Yes a right handed hitter but not a left handed hitter. Yeah 
And he doesn't seem to have the same kind of confidence with the uh, myriad of deliveries no. against the left handed hitters. But now he's got Gonzalez who struck out in his first time up tying runs are on base and a swing and a miss and Gonzalez totally befuddled on that pitch. Yeah he doesn't have a feel for this ball right now remember he's been out with a tight neck his neck has been stiff and when you have that problem and you're a big strong hitter sometimes it slows your swing down and the front side will come out well if you're going to give it all against this kid El Duque and I use the term kid if, if one birth date is right he's a kid if not he's 32 years of age but he's very tough on right handers. There's the 0 1 pitch and again he chases the outside pitch. No balls and two strikes so Gonzalez in an 0 and 2 hole. But what a year he is having with 119 runs batted in. And there he is with extra base hits home runs and a slugging percentage of over 600. Well when he stays healthy and he's in that lineup day in and day out he can put some amazing numbers up. But right now he is not too sure of how to approach. Orlando Hernandez he just doesn't see the ball when he comes from that big sweeping curveball. Now he doesn't know what to expect a fastball a breaking ball he doesn't know what to expect. No balls and two strikes McLemore at second Greer at first with one out. And he strikes out three identical pitches and Gonzalez chased all three and goes down on strikes for the second time. Two outs here in the fourth. You know when Gonzalez is in a groove he doesn't go after bad balls. He stays on the ball. Now here he is you can see where this is way look how far away that ball was. Now here it was way out in this area here. And he can't even reach it watch him reach out on this ball. See his seat's gone and he's got the extension that ball he missed that ball by a good foot. And that's when you're not in a groove when you don't feel comfortable and you swing at that ball you have no chance. Six strikeouts for El Duque two outs still two on and the first pitch fastball on the outside corner where we always talked about going up the ladder on a pitcher yes. this way they went sideways on him. exactly and he threw from the same arm angle as you mentioned with a good call at three identical pitches only a little bit farther away each one. So now it's up to Will Clark. He too struck out his first time up when uh, Hernandez struck out the side in the second. Two nothing Yankees lead but the Rangers have the tying runs on base. There's a breaking ball that breaks down low one and one to Clark. Well when you think about what a right handed side wheeler can do to get a left hander out you can run the fastball in on the left handed hitter you can throw a cutter but you're at Yankee Stadium with a short porch in right field. I would think the Yankees will probably stay away from Will Clark if he's going to hurt him at all he's going to have to hurt him to the big part of the ballpark. So they'll probably try to backdoor what we talk about a backdoor as Posada goes out to talk to him is throw the breaking ball over the outside part of the plate and make the hitter reach for the ball. And as we say when you think about the arsenal that Hernandez has he's got two types of breaking balls one that goes down and one that sweeps. Well he doesn't want a sweeper right here to to Will Clark. He wants the one to go down and if he can he'll try to backdoor it and maybe make him chase it again. That's what he struck him out on the first time a ball in the dirt. And there it was uh, but uh, Clark did not chase that uh, pitch down low in the dirt and a good stop made by Jorge Posada and the count two balls in one strike Hernandez who has thrown 61 pitches in three and two thirds innings has struck out six walked two and has allowed only one hit a uh, sharp double off the wall by McLemore here in the fourth trying to pitch out of his first jam of the game and Will Clark. A 290 lifetime average against the Yankees, but never having faced this guy before. And that was a tough pitch to lay off. Three and one. Well, he's thrown two curveballs that were excellent curveballs and were taken. Will Clark decided he's not going to swing at that bad curveball. But ironically, they were so close that they could have gone either way. But I think Will's got a little feel for him now. Now's the time for El Duque to either throw a changeup. He's thrown a lot of curveballs or a hard fastball here. Three and one with two out and two on. Here in the Ranger fourth and the pitch misses inside ball four and the bases are loaded. So uh, Hernandez with his second walk this inning three in the game and the bases are loaded for Pudge Rodriguez. So a chance for the Rangers catcher to get the Rangers back in the game. You know it's interesting we're at Yankee Stadium right now I was talking before the game with Tommy John one of the telecasters for the Yankees. Now he was a kind of pitcher that would pitch around hitters he thought could hit him even to load the bases. 
Well, I'm not so sure El Duque does that, but I, I have seen him do it already this year in order to get a right hand hitter. Well, now he's getting that a right handed hitter now. It's a very good hitter. But he has uh, slumped as of late, and uh, he's at his lowest point of the year, 326. He takes the ball outside. Let's check the runners for you. Uh, McLemore is over at third base. Rusty Greer is on at second. And Will Clark, the runner at first base. 1 0 to Rodriguez, who was hitting 347 and has dropped down to 326. Not bad when you drop down to 326. <laughs> huh? Here's the sidearm pitch. Swung on and missed. 1 and 1. Dick, that's what a breaking ball does. The more breaking balls that this kid, El Duque, throws, the faster it makes his fastball because. What it does is slow down the Texas Ranger bats. They're looking at so much off speed stuff that when they see a fastball, it surprises them. And Rodriguez, of course, there was a lot of talk earlier in the season about Yvonne Rodriguez maybe winning a batting title, which catchers don't often do. Well, catchers don't often play almost every day in that extreme heat that they have in Texas either. That's got to wear on you. One ball, one strike to Rodriguez. Bases loaded, two outs here in the Texas Four. And a foul ball. That's about as good a pitch as Rodriguez will see from El Duque. You know, it's interesting. That's exactly right because he's got two pitches he probably could have hit. They're on the inner half of the plate. But now watch this one. You're going to see a big sweeping sidearm breaking ball, I would think, right here. Now, the good part, if you're Pudge Rodriguez, Johnny Oates has told me that he hits the ball to right field as well as anybody, and that's the way he used to hit as a kid. And the crowd on its feet, 50,000 plus here at the stadium. One ball and two strikes. You know what the crowd's looking for, and that is the strikeout. And he gets him. He chased the breaking pitch, set up beautifully, as Jeff pointed out. Viva El Duque! And the Rangers, two strikeouts of the inning, leave the bases loaded. And in the middle of the fourth inning, the Yankees, two, the Rangers, nothing. Is old, he's still a kid in many <laughs> observance. This is the strikeout of Rodriguez. Well, he had set it up with two fastballs inside, and then he swings that big sloppy curveball outside, and he looks up to the heavens. This guy has had a difficult time in his life, and he is realizing a dream now. Last year, he was in a mental institution, not as a patient, but as a worker there for a couple dollars a day. And he's getting the chance at the major league level, and boy, does he appreciate it. After he was banished from Cuban baseball, that's where he worked briefly, and uh, he has a lot to be thankful for. And the Yankees are reaping a lot of those uh, dividends. As they come up in the bottom of the fourth inning, Bernie Williams singled his first time up. Williams hitting 354, leading the American League in hitting. Switch hitter, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. Rick Helling coming in with a record of 15 and 6, tied for second in the American League with victories. Two complete games and a shutout for Helling this season, and comes in with the fastball missing inside. And the count one and one. Helling, a native of uh, Devils Lake, North Dakota, now lives in Fargo. 27 year old right hander as uh, Jeff pointed out a burly pitcher at 6 3 220 pounds comes up with a fastball fouled off by Williams one and two. Well that's the kind of fastball up in the zone that he used to throw when he was a young kid he get in trouble and he tried to throw harder and he get it up in the zone and they would catch up to it and hit it now he's the kind of guy who can get the ball down in the strike zone. But I watched Bernie Williams hit a ball low and away yesterday out of the ballpark to left field hitting left handed. You get the ball down to Bernie, he could sting you. Chops down on it, and a great play made by McLemore going to his right, and he throws out Bernie Williams. That was a difficult play for McLemore as uh, Williams chopped down on it, and that really nearly scooted out into center field. Well, that was a good call, Dick. He, that was a terrific play. We talked earlier that McLemore's knees have been bothering him after playing on artificial turf, and now he's feeling pretty good, but that was a terrific play. And that's what the Rangers did in 96 when they won the division. They made great defensive plays. They didn't beat themselves. McLemore had arthroscopic surgery on both knees during the offseason, and he may have to undergo some more surgery at the end of this year. Yeah, when you have knees and then you start to get older that are bothering and getting a little creaky, and then you try to play on, on artificial turf, it's like trying to play on a green freeway. It takes its toll. And especially after you've had some surgery, you know, that this season is a long season at the major league level and it takes its toll on you. 
Dino Martinez who drove in the first Yankee run with a uh, single to left field and uh, got in caught in a rundown and eventually uh, called out when he ran out of the base path but he got the first Yankee run home the Yankees added another run in the third. Here's the 2 0 pitch. It's in there 2 and 1. You know we were talking about that play when Tino Martinez went out of the baseline. We talked about how one umpire overruled another and even overruled the crew chief. That's what's so good about this umpire and crew. They're not afraid to maybe embarrass. Oh that ball was coming right here. Well, I thought we had one. Well you thought you had one. <laughs> Speak for yourself <laughs> Mr. Catcher. <laughs> but when you when you think about an umpiring crew that want to get the play right they're not worrying about egos they are not worrying about somebody being shown up that really showed me something that's the crew chief Drew Colwell and I guarantee when that was over he said good call to Ed Hickok three balls two strikes and a good point you bring out with them working together because you remember that Oriole Yankee series mm -hmm. when there was a bad play made at third base and uh, the home plate umpire could have overruled or discussed with the third base umpire the true play. It was a missed call and they didn't do that. And uh, here they did. Well you know that really shows me something an, an umpiring crew works together most of the season they'll have people substituted but the crew chief now Drew Coble is an is a former athlete you know he was a quarterback at Elon College this guy is really a good man and I'm sure he's told his crew hey let's get the play right I don't care if I look like me I made a mistake but let's get the play right. Martinez fouls off the fastball once more and the count remains three balls and two strikes and these teams could indeed meet in the American League Division Series to start it off if things remain as they are and so uh, you don't want to get give a team confidence even though you're 58 over 500 you don't want to give them the impression that uh, even though their record is far inferior to yours that uh, they may have your number. Boy that's true because you remember that that's in the back of your mind. Of course if you remember in 1996 the Texas Rangers almost beat the Yankees and the Yankee that was one of their miracle years of course. But in that first series they had they had the lead as Tino fouls the ball back but they had the lead uh, I think on the, they won the first game they had the lead in the second game they just they just couldn't close them out and of course now who do they have they have the Yankee closer of that year John Wedlin and, and you're right you'd look at a short series and you can get knocked out look at the Cubs 116 wins they lost the Indians of 1954 lost to the Giants in four straight as a Martinez who made Helling work finally strikes out for out number two. Well this week on Fox Saturday Baseball it's a battle of division leaders as Pedro Rodriguez and the Texas Rangers take on these Yankees right here at the stadium as the Red Hot Yanks look to continue their tar and pace for the postseason coverage begins at 1230 Eastern and Pacific with the zone on Fox check your local listings Two out Darryl Strawberry taking ball one Strawberry the Yankees DH fly to left field his first time up. Two to nothing the Yankees lead and there's a strike on the inside corner one and one and again looking at those uh, lofty win seasons and how it does not guarantee that you're going to win the World Series or a playoff round. The one one to Strawberry pops it up to the center of the diamond. Clayton calls off Seal and makes the catch to retire the side so Helling retires the Yanks in order for the second time. And there is Darryl Strawberry who has been on a tear but 0 for 2 tonight after 4 it's 2 to nothing New York. I talk to my mom every Sunday. Back at Yankee Stadium Dick Stockton and Jeff Torborg with the Yankees leading 2 to nothing going to the fifth inning and here's how El Duque disposed of the Ranger threat last inning. I swear I know he's not walking the left handers on purpose to get to the right handers but he has struck Juan Gonzalez out looking so badly. And also Yvonne Rodriguez two of their top hitters are right handers though and he makes them look so sick with that sidearm breaking stuff. And he has a uh, Gonzalez and the, a lot of the Ranger uh, right handers talking to themselves. Hernandez will face the bottom third of the uh, Texas batting order here in the fifth inning Todd Seal who walked to uh, start the third inning leading off. 
looks at a curveball for a strike. Zeal, of course, uh, started the year with the Dodgers, was traded to the Florida Marlins in May 16th, but everyone knew he wasn't going to remain uh, with the Marlins for long. And a major house cleaning situation that frankly has a lot of the fans in South Florida disturbed, and rightfully so. Yeah, such a shame after the year they had last year. And normally you think that the second year after is when you reap the benefits of the attendance, but they couldn't do it. They didn't have the team in place. They didn't have a chance to say defending world champions no. with the team they put out there. No. But to their credit, they told Todd Zeal they would play some of the team that was in contention. Time is called at the plate. And the Zeal uh, now with a chance to get to postseason with the uh, Texas Rangers. Lays off the outside pitch, two balls and two strikes. Texas coming in with a record of 64 and 54. A half a game in front of the Anaheim Angels. Angels are riding a four game winning streak coming into tonight's play. Just got his bat on to stay alive. Oh boy. <laughs> this is tough for a right handed hitter. But you mentioned the Angels. I don't know how the Angels are doing what they're doing. They've got everybody on the ball club, it seems, on the DL. They've lost so much pitching throughout the season. Uh, they got a lot of heart with that ball club, and you wonder how long they can stay there doing it that way. Most people uh, are of the opinion that uh, the Rangers should hold off uh, Anaheim and win the West. I mean, you'd have to say so with the potent batting uh, order. I mean, the Yankees and Texas. Lead the American League in the hitting with the Yankees number one in Texas, too. Three balls and two strikes to Todd Zia leading off here in the fifth inning. He will be followed by Mike Sims and then Royce Clayton. There's Sims waiting his chance. And he's out of there right down the middle, and Todd Zeal. Goes down. That is the eighth strikeout for El Duque. And now it's time for our Michelin trivia question. And who was the last American League switch hitter to win a batting title? Mull that one over. Here's Mike Sims, who uh, struck out his first time up. Swing and a miss. El Duque looks like he's got a little more uh, zip on his fastball. Well, that last pitch, he challenged Big Mike Sims right down the middle and threw the ball right by him. And we talked earlier, when you have established the breaking ball so much early in the game, now all of a sudden you have the hitter's bat speed slow down for that pitch. One and one, and it appears, though, that the Rangers uh, may be laying off that sweeping breaking ball, at least some of the right-handers, as of late, Zeal did, and now Sims... Did on that pitch. Two and one. You know, as a catcher and a pitcher, you start to change gears a little bit in the middle of the game. Sometimes going around the lineup the second time or a time and a half through the lineup, you start to change on the sides of the plate you're going to use and you change the pitch selection a little bit. Fastball on the outside corner, two and two. In fact, Jorge Posada right there, Posada I should say right there was surprised with that pitch a little bit. He was looking for the ball down and in and it exploded up around his mask. But El Duque now you're going to see the big wide sweeper again. Fastball on the outside corner and tell you what uh, uh, Orlando Hernandez going to the heat a lot more here. He gets Sims for the second out and his ninth strikeout of the game here in the fifth which matches his season's high two strikeouts here in this fifth inning. Well I I guess wrong too. You can see Posada use his hands outside his glove that he wants him to throw sidearm. That's the sign to throw sidearm when he waves his his hand outside his shin guard. But they surprised both Sims and me with a fastball on the outside part of the plate and froze him. Clayton with a strike. Oh and one to Clayton so nine strikeouts for Hernandez. Four of them called third strikes. Clayton bounced into an inning inning double play his first time up. Base is empty, two outs. Yankees lead 2 0 and a fastball fouled upstairs into the third deck. So El Duque uh, coming in with the heat here in this fifth inning, looking to strike out the side for the second time tonight. 
No balls, two strikes to Royce Clayton. And he gets him. And that's the 10th strikeout for Orlando Hernandez. And that establishes a career and seasons high for the rookie as he strikes out the side for the second time. He has 10 K's in the game and the Yankees still lead the Rangers two to nothing in the middle of the fifth. Center of baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted without written consent. And welcome back to Yankee Stadium where the Yankees lead by a score of two to nothing going to the bottom of the fifth inning the Yankees who are 58 games over the 500 mark that's the most games over 500 by any Yankee club since 1939 they uh, lead the East Division by 18 and a half games looking to make it eight in a row 11 of their last 12. And they have just steamrolled over everybody in the American League. Tim Raines, the leadoff hitter, fall down on strikes his first time up, fouls off the first pitch. Talk about Raines and uh, some of the great years he had. He was 38 years old, and he had stolen bases from 70 to 90 in a five year span in the early to mid 80s. Among other uh, Great numbers. I mean, he is a 301 National League all time hitter. One ball and one strike to Reigns. Hitting uh, seventh in the Yankee order. Takes the ball two and one. We remember when Tim Reigns first came up, he was used as that prototypical leadoff hitter. And he did steal all those bases. In fact, when he was traded over the American League in 1990. One, I think he stole 51 bases that first year, but even then he took his time because he said he didn't see the pitchers well. Swinging bunt, Helling quickly off the mound, guns it to first in time. And Reigns is retired. One out here in the fifth inning. Well, the Twins are battling the Red Sox in the top of the sixth inning with the Red Sox leading 7 2. No more Garcia Para hit a home run, his 25th of the year off of Brad Ratke, the All-Star. And so the Red Sox now lead by a score of eight to two. It's seven to two. Jorge Posada with one out here in the fifth inning. Posada struck out looking his first time up. Yankees in front two to nothing. They about hit the Rangers three to one Helling is pitching a pretty good game but is uh, really being overshadowed by the uh, strikeout antics of uh, El Duque Hernandez. Well, that's amazing every time he gets two strikes on any hitter the fans stand and start cheering It's the first place I ever heard him really do that. That started with Ron Gidry. <laughs> right Louisiana like right every time Ronnie got uh, ahead of a hitter with two strikes the place stood up and started to roar. I of course caught Sandy Koufax a great strikeout pitcher and Nolan Ryan the fans would cheer but they didn't get on their feet every time they went to two strikes. They didn't put the K's up either at those uh, no. in those days did they. There's a breaking pitch and it's one ball and two strike uh, to Posada. What a fortunate uh, playing experience that you had to catch two of uh, maybe the five greatest all time pitchers in the game. I was really very fortunate as you mentioned there's a bullet. Another nice McLemore play. McLemore makes the play and uh, retires Posada for out number two. So McLemore twice has uh, robbed Yankees of base hits going to his right. But uh, yeah, as you see McLemore make this play, this is almost identical to the one that he made earlier in the ball game. That's a terrific play. But to get back a little bit to what you were saying, you know, when I think back on the guys that I was around, Hall of Famers Don Drysdale, Don Sutton, Sandy Koufax, uh, Nolan Ryan will obviously go in probably in a first ballot, I would think. If anybody would, he would. The three good ones, and I'm sure there are a lot more than that. Rocious fouls out to Clark. Yankees are down in order in the fifth. We go to the sixth inning. Faster truck? Ah, 
Hey, this is yesterday's paper. Now you have a chance to win a real Ron Hornaday NASCAR racing truck, a one-year lease on a 99 Chevy pickup, or a tool set during Napa Auto Parts trucking and tour, sweepstakes, and sale. Come by today. Tomorrow's paper. Regal Ride gas shocks are $10.99. Struts as low as $21.99. Here so far, the Yankees lead 2-0. El Duque with 10 strikeouts. Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach, has to enjoy what he is uh, seeing. And right now, we'll uh, wrap it up for you. If you hope you've been thinking about our Michelin trivia question, which tonight was, who is the last American League switch hitter to win a batting title? Let's see if he came up with this. Willie Wilson. Ooh. Oh, 1982. It. Now, uh, both Jeff and I thought of Mickey Mantle thinking to be a Yankee tie in but not to be 1956 when he won the triple crown 353 was his batting average then Bernie Williams switch hitter currently leading the American League in hitting Tom Goodwin leading off and uh, 0 for 2 takes ball one that line out was a soft liner back to the mound line drive and this one a little harder hit but right at Chuck Knobloch who handles it for out number one. Goodwin retired for the third time tonight and that will bring up Mark McLemore the Rangers second baseman. He has sparkled in the field tonight. And has the only Texas hit a sharp double off the right field wall in the fourth inning. The Rangers loaded the bases. Before El Duque struck out Pudge Rodriguez to end that threat. 1 0, the count to McLemore. Brocious playing wide of third and even with the bag. Rest of the infield around to the right. And uh, Orlando Hernandez falling behind 2 0 now to the Rangers' second baseman. He's a switch hitter. There's a fastball over 2 and 1. You know, it's amazing to watch this guy work. He works very smoothly, even though he's unorthodox. Everything is smooth. Even the leg kick, which is a, it's a really drastic leg kick, has a little hump in it right at the end when he does it. But then he comes to the plate with a very smooth delivery. He doesn't get out in front of himself. And I think a lot of that is what really fools the hitters because he looks like he's throwing so easy, and then the ball flies at him. And he walks uh, McLemore. And that is the fourth walk issued by Hernandez. One on and one out here in the sixth. Dick, here's what I mean. By lifting his leg way up, he hides the ball. Now the leg goes way up in here, and he hides the ball. Here he goes. Look how, look how he turns, and he hides the ball. Look how high that leg is. It's right up around his head. Now when he comes to the plate, they don't see the ball until it comes out of that delivery in a low arm slot. So it makes him so effective. Rusty Greer swinging at the first pitch pops it up and Jeter in short center field makes the catch for out number two. So he kind of it's a kind of like a lag with the uh, right hand coming over after the high kick. So there are two out McLemore remains at first base here in the sixth inning. Well on Saturday August 29th college football is back with a bang. D'Angelo Evans leads the defending national champions as the Cornhuskers of Nebraska kick off the post Tom Osborne era. It's the Eddie Robinson Classic Louisiana Tech versus Nebraska August 29th on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Two out to Juan Gonzalez who has been uh, totally bewitched. And if we were in the musical sense bothered and bewildered I guess by El Duque's <laughs> deliveries tonight has struck out on two occasions and as Jeff has pointed out with the uh, neck problem his first time back after missing three. He's the D.H. tonight two outs and McLemore at first so the tying run is Gonzalez at the plate he does have 33 home runs. That's the best pitch he's gotten to hit tonight. You know I was just about to say now as a catcher and a pitcher after making a hitter look terrible. In the first two at bats, he didn't even come close to fouling off the, the sidearm breaking ball. You got to be careful of getting caught in the trap of trying to change it, do something else. 
Juan Gonzalez just missed a home run pitch there. That was a fastball that was left in the middle from the middle in and that's where Gonzalez drops ahead of the bat on it. I always a catch as a catcher said I'm going to keep going until he shows me can hit a particular pitch. If Posada now I'm thinking is boy am I glad he didn't hit that one out of the ballpark. I think I'm going to go down and away from him now. Good point. Why change if uh, you're getting him out on that pitch. There he is and there he is with the swing. So uh, I think that uh, Hernandez and the Yankees dodged a bullet with that previous pitch. Oh did they ever. This game could have been tied up with that one swing. And Gonzalez is so strong he holds his hands high and he can get down to that low pitch from the middle end. The pitch he has trouble with we've seen all night is low and away. So does every other hitter that ever lived if they swing at bad balls. But yeah. you, excuse me Dick you just want to make sure that you don't get it in that hitting zone. That was a, uh, a mental mistake perhaps. Well the crowd on his feet. Looking to see him. Hernandez can strike out Gonzalez or and he almost does uh, he held up on the pitch and it bluffed to first base McLemore gets back and the count is even two and two. Boy, what a tough pitch to hold up on I don't know how he held up on that ball in fact he swung at balls farther right. away than that one. Say, it's the first time he has held up on that. Yes. Pitch. Crowd looking for strikeout number eleven. From El Duque. And he holds up three and two now and so with the count full and two out McLemore will be off at first. Yankees uh, leading two to nothing. This has been a terrific pitchers duel. Rangers have been held to one hit. They loaded the bases in the fourth. The Yankees have three hits and a two nothing lead. Now what you might do here if your Posada is, chain, is throw a fastball low and away much as they did to Mike Sims lock him up when that sidearm fastball instead of a sidearm breaking ball might surprise him. And that's what he does. Struck him out. Kind of a breaking pitch. But he had a little more velocity on that. Gonzalez strikes out for the third time in the game. Ten strikeouts for Orlando Hernandez. And in the middle of the sixth the Yankees still lead the Rangers two to nothing. And Century Mutual Funds presents the play of the century. And it was right here at Yankee Stadium. Game five of the 56 World Series. Don Larson pitches the only no hit no walk game a perfect game in World Series history. Larson retired the Brooklyn Dodgers getting Dale Mitchell on strikes 27 up 27 down. Yogi Berra becomes part of baseball history as the battery mate to the only perfect game in World Series play. And of course David Wells this year pitched a perfect game for the Yankees and uh, Don Larson. The pitcher there's Yogi Berra but tell you what yeah, Berra had a great career but that was the greatest pitching effort mm -hmm. in the history of the World Series by Don Larson. Chuck Knobloch leading off in the bottom of the sixth inning takes strike one from Rick Helling. I want to correct uh, the strikeout numbers uh, Hernandez by striking out Gonzalez now with 11 strikeouts in the game his previous high in a game nine. The one ball one strike to Knobloch who is 0 for 2 tonight. How about the coincidence that Don Larson pitched a no hitter or the perfect game in the World Series. And you mentioned David Wells and they went to the same high school of course yes. not at the same time. San but Diego. Yes. Fast ball in the air shallow right field Sims coming on in and he makes the catch. For out number one we have not had a lot of fly balls hit tonight uh, come to think of it. They haven't really checked to see but. That uh, was may have been the first fly ball hit by a Yankee. Knobloch flying out to right field. You know, and that's saying something about Helling too, because normally he's a fly ball pitcher. When you throw that cross seam fastball up in the strike zone, and when you say up, now remember that don't get confused with up for a major leaguer is from the mid thigh upward, not necessarily up around the letters any longer. But Helling has pitched very well too, and as you mentioned, kind of lost a little bit in this unbelievable game. That El Duque is pitching. Here is uh, Jeter, and he takes the pitch inside ball one. Well, Rick Helling will never lose his glove because, as you noticed uh, on the close up shot, has his name etched in gold on it. Rick Helling, right where the thumb is. As Jeter fouls it off. One ball and one strike. You see when he starts his warm up 
Right on the thumb area, it says Rick Helling. So we will leave that alone if we pay a visit to the Texas Clubhouse <laughs> after the game. One ball and one strike with one out. Took something off that pitch and missed two and one. Well, we talked about Derek Jeter about how when he first came up, he really liked to shoot the ball to the right side, to the right field side. He is an inside out hitter. But now, much along the way that Knobloch was coming up, now he can turn on the ball and he hits the ball all over the ballpark. But he likes the ball up in the strike zone. And as he gets older and stronger, he gets and gains in power. And of course, his best buddy is Alex Rodriguez, and what a job he's doing. Two peas in a pod. Fastball and Jeter misses. Three balls and two strikes. Uh, Jeter with a 15 game hitting streak earlier this year, the second longest of his career. Three and two with nobody on and one out. Here in the Yankees sixth inning the Yankees with the runs in the first and third innings and that has been the scoring and what has been an outstanding battle of pitchers tonight fastball he's out of there on the outside corner and Jeter complaining to Dale Ford but uh, he goes down that is the fifth strikeout by Helling and Jeter with a few more choice words for Dale Ford. Now here's the pitch. We're talking about Helling coming over the top, and he drives the ball at the plate. And this ball looks like it's right on the outside corner. And Dale Ford calls it. And it was one of those pitches that Derek Jeter knew he couldn't reach this ball, and was hoping that by heading off to first base, he convinced Dale Ford it was not a strike. Here's Paul O'Neill. First pitch rounds to McLemore, and he makes the play. Well, Helling has retired 11 in a row. Make it 12 for that matter. He has settled down, but his Rangers trail the Yankees two to nothing. Need a faster truck? Hey, this is yesterday's paper. Now you have a chance to win a real Ron Hornaday NASCAR racing truck, a one-year lease on a 99 Chevy pickup, or a tool set during Napa Auto Parts trucking and tooling sweepstakes and sale. Come by today. Tomorrow's paper. Evercraft Tools, now 25% off. Yankees take a 2 0 lead as we move to the top of the seventh. Meanwhile, FX Baseball Saturday night continues this week. Dingers, taters, going yard, whatever one might call them. Mark McGuire has a bunch. Will Big Mac have enough left down the stretch to break Roger Maris's record? Find out Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, as the Bucks battle the cards only on FX. You know, it's interesting, uh, Jeff, uh, talking about Mark McGuire. And you started to see it during the home run hitting contest at the All Star game. If you notice, they were, for some reason, that pitcher throwing was pitching him away. And now they're not giving him good pitches to hit. They're not coming inside, and he's taking some swings on chasing pitches that he normally doesn't do. I think you're right. He gets anxious. They're not pitching to him. He's trying to help his club. It's not just home runs. No. Because right. he's so team oriented. I think what's happened, I, I, you know, of course, I, I could never experience anything like that, but. I think taking batting practice and having half the stadium full just to watch him take batting practice taking his toll on him also. Here's Will Clark to start the six looks at a curveball for a strike and right now Roger Maris is ahead of Mark McGuire for the first time this year. McGuire one behind Roger Maris is uh, home run pace. Big swing and a slow roll to the first Martinez will make the play himself. And Will Clark is retired for out number one. This is the start of a four game series. And uh, a series uh, one might say more important to the Rangers because of their half game lead in the West than the Yankees. But uh, the Yankees are on a roll and they would like to continue the role. And uh, again we said we don't know what will happen in postseason in a short series anything could happen. But the Yankees want to win as many as they can and 116 is the most anyone has ever won in baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah you want to keep going you play one of the old cliche of one game at a time that's all you can think about. Sidearm delivery to Pud Rodriguez. One and oh that was the 100th pitch thrown by Orlando Hernandez. 
11 strikeouts, four walks, and only one hit, but a masterful pitching performance. There's a strike, one and one. You know, you were talking about the Rangers, too, this being so important for them. They are in the middle of an unbelievable stretch. They play the four here. They go play two in Boston, and then they go back home to play the Indians and the Yankees again. I mean, you're playing the best teams in baseball. It is a 17-game string against the Yankees, the Red Sox, and the Indians solely. Yes. So this is the meat of their season right here. I should correct myself. I should say in the American League because you got a right. couple super teams over in the other league too, and maybe, maybe they have three now with the Astros having Randy Johnson. I would think you have to put him in there. One two pitch and it's chopped to the right side and Noblock throws out Rodriguez but you notice how tentative Rodriguez was on that swing. Well August 16th on Fox Sports Net it's Formula One racing. The race for the points title heats up as the season winds down. The Schumacher Hockenden battle rolls into Budapest. The Hungarian Grand Prix Sunday August 16th on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. One ball no strikes the count to Todd Zeal with two outs and nobody on base here in the seventh inning. One and one swung swung on and missed uh, Hernandez has retired the side in order. Three times tonight and he's got two outs here in the seventh for not on. You know if I'm Joe Torre and Mel Stoudemire sit, sitting in the Yankee dugout. Yeah I'd like to see strikeouts but I'd rather see easy innings you know one or two or three pitch batters with a ground ball that would be easier on El Duque and then they don't even have to go to the bullpen if he continues to throw that way strikeouts start to add up number of pitches and they don't want to load too many pitches on him. Two balls and a strike to Tom Zeal who has walked and was called out on strikes tonight. Only one hit tonight for the Rangers. And a line drive and the second hit of the ball game. Sharply hit and it gets by Bernie Williams. Zeal is on his way to second base and he'll hold up there with a double. So a pair of doubles tonight amounting for the Texas offense. And the tying run will come to the plate with two away. Mike Sims who has struck out twice. You know looking at El Duque pitch with he and Posada they are trying to, to change their whole approach a little bit. This ball was low and in with this short stroke that Zeal has he can get from where he holds the bat down to the ball low and inside. It's the ball out over that they're all waving at. Now you got Mike Sims who struck out the last time on a fastball that locked him up on the outside part of the plate. This seems to be the time where Hernandez seems to bear down. He gets a right handed hitter up with runners on base. And then he starts to go to that real nasty low arm angle and throw a lot of breaking stuff. Mike Sims was three for four last night against the Indians, his third three hit game of his career. He's just looking for one right now. And the first pitch misses outside. That is the kind of a pitch that all of the Ranger right handers chase in the early innings. Absolutely. And that's what happens. Now, the more they see a pitcher as the game goes on, they can make some adjustments. They, as you say, they swung at that ball. Every one of the right handed hitters swung at that ball early in the game. Lead at second by Zeal with two outs. The Yankees trying to protect a two to nothing lead here in the seventh. Swung on and missed. One and one. Now the Texas Rangers have been proficient with runners in scoring position leading the American League with a 307 average. Yankees not far behind. Now Johnny Oates's team uh, Johnny teaches them to play the inside game as well just the way that Joe Torre's Yankees do that the, there's no uh, I guess it's no magic of why these two teams are good teams it's because they don't beat themselves and they play the inside game well now there's something that you don't see normally in a game like this you see the pitcher faking the second base uh, Jeter faked the runner back now they're not necessarily looking to pick the guy off but you get a little closer to second base in case there's a little base hit the left field say and it might throw him out cause him to be thrown out at the plate especially with two outs this time see uh, Sims checks his swing and the count two balls and one strike this is an important juncture of this game because the Yankees with a two run lead don't want to see it get down to a one run affair at this point 
Sims does have 12 homers. So he's got some power as well. But uh, there's a lot of territory out in left and left center here at Yankee Stadium. And finally, the waiting game continues and time is called. You know, it's interesting. When you see a big right handed power hitter, normally they like the ball up in the strike zone. And if you watched El Duque pitch tonight, he does not get the ball above the waist at all unless he wants to. He normally stays down, down below mid thigh, down below the knees. Like that. That was low, and it's three and one now to Sims. The on deck hitter is Royce Clayton. But if I were catching in a situation like this, I look up, I see there's an open base at first base, even though the hitter is the would be the tying run. I still don't give him a chance because he's a big strong guy. I don't give him a chance to hit anything hard here. I'd go to the breaking stuff low and away. See if he just guesses fastball and misses the breaking ball. And if you walk him uh, you got the number nine hitter up who's a singles hitter. He challenged Sims that time. And Sims missed so the count three and two. With two outs. Boy did he ever. He, he challenged him up in the strike zone. Just what we were talking about he hasn't done much of. And now the three ball and two strike count with two outs. Zeal the runner at second in a two to nothing game. And he slices it foul into the upper deck. And now Posada wants to uh, go to the mound and uh, converse with uh, Hernandez. And one of the reasons he's going to the mound, I guarantee you right here, both those pitches were in the middle of the plate. Posada set up outside. And even though he was able to throw the ball by Sims on the pitch before the last one. The last one, of course, he fouled off. He threw the other one by him. They were too much in the middle of the plate. Posada doesn't want him to go there again. And he's out of there. Fastball on the outside corner, and that is strikeout number 12. And the Rangers leave a runner at second. And as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning with the score, the Yankees two, the Rangers nothing. Let's take a look at what's coming your way tonight on Fox Sports News following our game. For that, we take you to the Fox Network Center. And welcome back to Fox Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net. New York at night. The Yankees Stadium and a great crowd on hand tonight as the city has gotten Yankee fever. It took them a while to get it, Jeff, but they have it now, and uh, they are all witnessing what uh, is looking like a historic season, never seen before, and according to Don Zimmer, uh, maybe never seen again. Uh, he says you'll never see this again, especially with a team that does not have a murderer's row kind of lineup. They are so well balanced it's amazing. We've seen the great pitching tonight. They have an outstanding bullpen. They can run. We mentioned that they have eight guys in double figures and home runs. They just do everything well. They're a good defensive ball club and they know how to win. They really believe they can win too. And every game there's another player who becomes the hero. Here's Bernie Williams strike one from Rick Helling. Williams one for two with a single. Helling has Settled down nicely after giving up a run in the first inning on Martinez's single and a sacrifice fly in the third. He has retired 12 in a row. But the Rangers have not been able to muster any kind of an attack against Orlando Hernandez. Helling 15 and 6 on the year, one of the big winners in the American League. One ball, one strike to Williams. Well you can see why Rick Helling has won 15 games. He has harnessed the very very fine potential that he has. He's got a good live arm. He's got a good fastball good down and breaking ball and a change up and he's been able to locate. Now you see why he's won 15 games this year. Round ball up the middle and uh, Clayton. And that was not an easy play for Clayton because it was a kind of a halfway bounce for him. And he retires Williams for out number one here in the seventh yeah. inning. Now when you think about what Doug Melvin for Texas went out and did for this ball club about two weeks before the the deadline in July he got Louisa the pitcher from the Pirates. Then he goes out and he gets Todd Stolomar who's a number one type player uh, type pitcher I should say at the front end of the rotation. 
And then Zeal and Royce Clayton, of course, Royce Clayton came over with Todd Stottlemyre, but he's revamped the left side of the infield. Got more potential power and hitting from that side of the infield and more range and two good starting pitchers. Well, Melvin has done what he uh, could, and it's important for the left side of that defense. And Zeal and Clayton should give them good gloves. They haven't come around on the offensive side, but that's not what they were acquired for. Pitches inside, two balls and one strike to Tino Martinez. RBI single in the first inning, 93 runs batted in. And uh, Martinez now only seven runs batted in shy of becoming the first Yankee to drive in 100 or more runs in three straight years since Don Mattingly did it four straight times in the mid 80s. You know, mentioning Mattingly's name, I think probably the toughest job on this Yankee ball club mm -hmm. was Tino Martinez coming into Yankee Stadium, replacing a very popular and very good player. Getting off to a slow start and staying with it and then he's just been outstanding for them. And I think it shows uh, a lot about the characters man very quiet guy. Tough shoes to fill for sure as he takes up high three and two. And you know the New York fans are a very discerning fan and and they love Don Mattingly. He he was called Donnie baseball for a lot of reasons. He came to play the game the way it's to be played. But Tino Martinez has done a fantastic job replacing Don here. Foul ball out of play and the count remains three balls and two strikes. Dick Stockton and Jeff Torborg with you at Yankee Stadium hoping you're enjoying this pitcher's duel tonight between Rick Helling and Orlando Hernandez before the crowd estimated at 50,000. The Yankees 58 games over 500 and Martinez strikes out. That is the sixth strikeout for Helling, and there are two gone here in the seventh inning. And very quietly, Rick Helling has retired 14 straight Yankees. Yeah, he has done a terrific job. Um, you hear the crowd hooting it, turning it up a little because into the batter's box is Daryl Strawberry. But Rick Helling has done everything that Johnny Oates can ask a pitcher to do, especially against this great offensive team of the Yankees. Here's Strawberry, and he takes in tight ball one. Strawberry has uh, been retired twice. Well, that you know the fans booed a little bit because the ball was up and in. Certainly, Helling is not going to knock down Daryl Strawberry in a game like this. No reason to. He was just trying to set up the outside part of the plate. Now he's trying to go away from him. That's on the corner for a strike. One ball and one strike. Two outs, nobody on base. Fastball just missed inside. The Yankee offense potent this year. Averaging six runs and ten hits. Tonight a different story. But the Rangers have zero on the board in the run column. That's the story overall. Well, when you think about both these clubs so good offensively, and then you look up on the board and only see five hits, between them you're saying hey that's pretty good pitching and also good defense Mark McLemore has made two sensational plays behind Helling and Tim Raines in the first inning made a fine catch that pitches down low ball four and a walk that is uh, only the second base on balls given up by Helling the two out walk to Darryl Strawberry so Tim Raines will come to the plate he was caught looking and uh, was out on a swinging butt Helling uh, Having an outstanding game, Dick Bosman, the pitching coach, watching him carefully here as he has thrown over 100 pitches in the game. But those are solid numbers. They really are. And this is a nice night to pitch, too. As you mentioned earlier, it's cool. It's not a real hot night. And for the Texas ball club coming out of Texas, where it's been in triple digits all most of the last five or six weeks, this has got to feel great. So that Helling's going to feel strong, even over just a little over 100 pitches, I would think. Even feels great to some of the commentators who came out of Florida with the temperatures <laughs> in the 90s too, Jeff. I know what you mean. <laughs> two outs and the Reigns the batter with the strawberry at first. The Yankees leading two to nothing. Trying to stretch this latest winning streak to eight games. And a shot foul down the right field line and Ed Hickox had to uh, get away from that one. You know when I look at this Yankee ball club we talked about the Yankees 
solid all the way through their ball club. Every aspect of the game. One of the things we didn't talk about is the bench. The bench is extremely solid. When you think about Tim Raines coming off the bench, he's a switch hitter. That's, he's able to run. He can switch hit. Then you've got a center fielder who can play left field and Chad Curtis. You've got a terrific bench on this Yankee ball club. And that's what winning clubs can do. It costs higher payroll, but they have a strong bench. Here's the 0 1 pitch and it's up high and remember early in the season you know when you think it's all uh, ice cream and cake for Joe Torrey he had to make a decision and for some reason early in the year he was able to mollify Tim Raines and Darryl Strawberry early in the season before the Yankees got on the big roll to keep them happy one is a DH one is an outfielder one not playing in a given day that wasn't an easy thing for a manager to do you know that well you're not kidding especially guys that are originally stars in this game. Two and one. But one of the things that he was able to do as well, we talked about chemistry before. A lot of people poo poo chemistry. They say oh, it doesn't mean anything. When you don't have it is when you realize how important it is. But also, what they were able to do was plug people in when a key person went down. First, Jeter went down. I thought Jeter was the only guy that they probably couldn't do without for a long time. They played very well when he went down for a while. Then Bernie Williams went down in center field. Chad Curtis did a good job. Soho had filled in at shortstop originally and started hitting the ball right away. So it's a very deep Yankee ball club. But uh, you know the good teams the teams that have great years also avoid the big injuries the long term injuries. And they were a little afraid that David Cohn was in that stage as well. And here he is leading baseball with the uh, wins. Yeah they've had great starting pitching. And, but you know some of the names you're mentioning if they were on other clubs. They wouldn't be that far from the waiver wire. We're not talking about uh, uh, brilliant players here. The Yankees have done it with talent that is frankly not amongst the best. I'm not talking about their meat and potatoes guys. I'm talking about the, some of the players you're mentioning now. So their bench people have done it, and, and that's what the chemistry is all about. That pitch is down low, ball four, and Reigns walks. That is the third walk. And Vic Bosman is uh, going to come out. Chad Curtis is going to run for Tim Re for uh, Daryl Strawberry. You know, I think what they did, I think they put two pitch runners in. I That's think right. Homer Bush went into second well, base. Reigns, Reigns went out too, right? Yeah. Bush for Strawberry. How about that? Here we're just talking about the bench. Homer Bush. Who oh, the Yankees ran out of options and decided that they were going to keep him on their roster. And we were talking about Chad Curtis coming off the bench originally when the center fielder was down. But that was Bernie Williams. He can go play left field. You've got something going for you. If you can take a natural center fielder and put him in left field, which is what Joe Torrey can do for the defense here for the Yankees. And left field at Yankee Stadium is one of the toughest left fields in baseball to play. So you put Chad Curtis in who can run. Homer Bush is in it can run now. You got two sets of fresh legs and you also have Curtis a good defensive player in the game. So here is Posada with two on and two outs. Posada has uh, struck out called out looking and uh, grounded out his last time up. Helling trying to pitch out of a jam. He had retired 14 in a row before walking Strawberry and Reigns. Gunderson warming up for the Texas Rangers. And also a big right hander, Tim Crabtree, a left and right hander going at this point. Pinch runners at first and second with two outs. And the strike, no balls and two strikes. Osada 338 with runners in scoring position. And a foul ball. Still no balls and two strikes. There's the uh, bullpen. You mentioned uh, Crabtree, the right hander, Gunderson, the left hander. Homer Bush 
at second Chad Curtis at first two pinch runners. So we'll have a new left fielder in the eighth inning. Here is the 0 2 pitch and just getting a piece of it is Posada to stay alive. Well the Yankees have speed on the base pads. They're looking for more insurance here leading two to nothing here in the last of the seventh inning. Bush at second Curtis at first and he's out of there strike three Posada goes down on strikes for the second time tonight and that is the seventh strike out of the game for Helling Yankees leave two and we go to the eighth inning with New York leading Texas two to nothing. Chad Curtis is uh, going into play left field replacing Tim Raines. He went in as a pinch runner as we go to the top of the eighth inning. I want to remind you that next week on Baseball Thursday are the Yankees the greatest team of all time. The Bombers historic season rolls on in Minnesota or the Angels are charging toward what they hope will be a playoff berth and it would have to be a division title. Home stretch kicks off against the Tigers. Check the local listings for the game in your area. There's the triumvirate of Don Zimmer Joe Torre and Mel Stottlemyre was Don Zimmer as you know played on many championship teams and uh, pennant winning teams with the Dodgers in uh, 1955 which was the first Brooklyn Dodger championship and only one that they won there. They won 10 in a row lost and I think they were something like 20 and one at one point but they never got close to 58 games over 500 mark and, and Don Zimmer frankly says I can't explain it I am totally befuddled by what's going on. Uh, this team is delivered and were a hit one way or another would have meant defeats in many games but they didn't get it we got the hits and we've just continued to win games. You know, one of the things if you don't beat yourself you've got a chance. First pitch to Clayton is over for a strike. How about that approach. That was a sidearm breaking ball and Clayton started down toward the third base coach Jerry Naren before that ball came in. There's that high kick and then the hiding of the ball as you pointed out before by El Duque one and one to Clayton who is 0 for 2 tonight bounced into a double play. Hernandez has a struck out 12. He is allowed only two hits both doubles. The Rangers have not been able to get a man to third. There's a uh, sweeping pitch for a strike one and two. Is that amazing when you think about where this man has come from. Last October his half brother Levon Hernandez was the MVP of the World Series. He's hearing the results in Cuba and now he's pitching at Yankee Stadium. And can you believe he's the number five starter for the Yankees. He serves it up to a shallow right field but there is Hernandez or making the catch or Martinez for out number one here in the eighth inning Tino Martinez. And even when the Rangers have got their bats on the ball they have been tentative at best. Yeah they haven't been able to stay on the ball at all they you know their rear end comes out whenever you throw something side wheeling like that it's tough to stay at home plate if you're a right handed hitter. And of course we mentioned that one of the hitters that got the double was Mark McElmore hitting left field hitting left handed I should say and the other by Todd Zeal was a ball that was inside but other than that he's barely made a mistake. Here's Tom Goodwin the leadoff hitter takes a breaking ball inside one and oh Goodwin 0 for three tonight. Two hits. McLemore's double in the fourth with one out and Zeal's two out double in the seventh inning. A sharp one hopper to Knobloch. He handles it for out number two. So there are two away here in the eighth inning. Well, the Orioles and Indians going at it tonight. Tied 4 4 in the bottom of the eighth inning. Eric Davis, 0 for 2 tonight, doubled down the third baseline to extend his hitting streak to 28. And that tied the major league high. With Garrett Anderson, 4-4 Orioles and Indians in the bottom of the eighth inning. Mark McLemore, who has been on base twice tonight with a double and a walk, looks at a curve on the outside corner, strike one. We're talking about what a story El Duque is. Eric Davis is another beautiful story, you know, yes. fighting cancer and coming back from a bad neck, a bad back. I'll tell you what, this has been a great year for. Uh, heartwarming personal stories yes. for home run slugging. Well, everyone loves home runs in the uh, chase for Roger Maris's mark, and for a great team exploit, the Yankees yes. and what they're doing. 
Now right now the 50 3,835, and that is the attendance tonight here at Yankee Stadium on its feet looking for another strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch to McLemore, and just a bit high. <laughs> you got over 50,000 people out here umpiring at this point. One ball and two strikes to McLemore. Watch that concentration. El Duque's pitch, and he missed two and two. Well, he's missed with a couple breaking balls, but this is what George Steinbrenner, owner of the Yankees, has talked about. The fans should be out here in droves, and they are now watching this super team play. He's out of there on the outside corner. Strikeout number 13 as McLemore throws his helmet. A 1-2-3 inning for El Duque looking for his eighth win and easily his most impressive pitching performance of the year. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning in the Yankees leading the Rangers two to nothing. Yankees leading two to nothing. Coming up in the bottom of the eighth and this Sunday it's a Fox NFL special when Brett Favre and the NFC champion Packers take on the Oakland Raiders in a preseason matchup. Don't miss John Madden, Pat Summerall and Matt Millen, Terry, Howie, JB and new addition Chris Collinsworth as they bring you all the action. It all starts at 4 p.m. Eastern 1 p.m. Pacific on Fox. Scott Brocious leading off here in the bottom of the eighth inning takes ball one. From Rick Helling, the Rangers leading two to nothing. El Duque with a masterful pitching performance, and Rick Helling not that far behind as he comes inside and falls behind Brocious, two and zero. Brocious with a single in two trips scored one of the two Yankee runs. And a fly ball hit deep to left field. Greer's back has room, and he makes the catch. That's one of the longer balls hit tonight at Yankee Stadium, but a long out for Brocious. Well, you mentioned earlier, too, about no fly balls. There weren't very many fly balls out there. And uh, that is a credit to Rick Helling, who is known as a fly ball pitcher, and he has pitched down beautifully. And remember the streak that we talked about early in the game about 14 consecutive games with home runs. At first, I thought that was going the way it left the bat, but did not. Chuck Knobloch, who is 0 for 3 tonight, average down to 248, takes strike one down the middle. The paid attendance tonight of 53,835 is the fourth largest crowd at Yankee Stadium this season. They had 47,000 yesterday, so the crowds are coming to the Bronx. Here's the 0 1 pitch and a fly ball to left field coming on in his career. He got a good jump and he makes the catch for out number two. It's fight time on Fox. Every jab, every hook, every body blow, and every uppercut. The sweet science practiced by today's best fighters. Fight time on Fox tomorrow at 8 on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listing. Two down, and uh, Derek Jeter, the batter, he is uh, 0 for 2, reached on an error, and drove in a run on a sacrifice fly in the third inning. The Yankees getting their runs on a Martinez single in the first and Jeter sack fly in the third. Fouls it off. Strike one. Martina Hernandez has gotten a lot of run support this year in his seven and three record coming in. He had 14 runs scored by the Yankees in each of his last two starts. 13 runs against Detroit. 10 with Toronto and 11 with Montreal. Five of the seven wins the Yankees scored at least 10 runs tonight. It's been a different story. Ball strike two to Jeter. I watched him pitch a game earlier in the year against the Mets where they got him, got to him early in the game. You know he never gave in. You watch the face. When you're in a uniform for 30 some years, you learn to watch body language and facial expressions. He never showed that he was behind and he held his club in the game, and sure enough, they got back in it. You know, when you take a look at an inexperienced guy, a lot of times you'll see either giving in, frustration, or a little fear. You don't see it in this guy at all. Here's the one two and Jeter is out on strikes. 
That is the eighth strikeout of the game for Helling. Well, he's done his part. Now it's up to the Texas Bats with one last chance, trailing the Yankees 2 0 coming to the ninth. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by MCI. One team, one company, one local to global connection. And welcome back to Yankee Stadium. And El Duque comes out to try to wrap it up. Two to nothing going into the top of the ninth inning and our uh, Fox Sports News items. The Mike Tyson controversy looking to get a license in New Jersey. Following the game you'll get all of that the report on the game between the Atlanta Braves and the San Diego Padres and Steve Sachs Foxco all coming up after the game. So the last chance for the Texas Rangers it'll be the three four and five hitters Rusty Greer Juan Gonzalez and Will Clark against Orlando Hernandez 13 strikeouts the most ever by a Yankee rookie. Mike Jerzenbeck and uh, Mariano Rivera warming up in the bullpen. Greer 0 for 2 with a walk was uh, robbed in the first inning on a great diving catch by Tim Raines. The count 1 and 1. Rangers looking to get a runner on base to start something. That fastball on the inside corner 1 and 2. You know a factor to be considered in the ninth inning now the first two of the three hitters are left handed and the left handers are the guys that give they'll do some problems so Joe Torrey probably going one hitter at a time here. Foul ball into the lower stand one ball and two strikes. So as a manager sometimes you say OK normally you would bring your closer in this situation Mariano Rivera but. El Duque is pitching so well I'll give him a chance one hitter at a time I won't give him a chance to lose this game breaking ball uh, grounded to Martinez who makes the play unassisted for out number one Greer tried to pull a breaking pitch and he's retired for out number one and that'll bring up a very frustrated Juan Gonzalez who's returned to action tonight coming in with 119 runs batted in has resulted in uh, three strikeouts by the Rangers star. This is the way you'd like to see him hit with nobody on base. Remember the playoffs in 1996 he was hitting the ball all over this place could not hold this ballpark couldn't hold him. But tonight he has not seen the ball well against El Duque. He just has had terrible swings. One good swing that he fouled the ball off. Takes a fastball for a strike. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer for Baseball Thursday is Larry Myers. Tonight's game was produced by Tom Hewitt and directed by Jeff Mitchell. And the vice president of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Thanks to all our technical and production crew for a job well done. Gonzalez styles it off to the right. And the count 0 and 2. Already El Duque has the most strikeouts by a Yankee rookie. Pitcher 13 the previous record was established by Stan Bonson in 1968 but now El Duque is looking for number 14. Brown getting a good workout tonight Jeff on your feet so many times. You know it's neat to see this uh, the life is in these people here back in the Bronx you talk about the new golden age well this is a capital for a lot of years of the center of baseball and we're going to see probably a big side wheel and breaking ball right here. One ball and two strikes. That was so far outside that <laughs> Gonzalez wasn't even going to think about. It. Well, that was halfway to New Jersey, but <laughs> you want to keep it away from his power, and they were making sure they would there. But this is wonderful to see this kind of turnout in New York now, and they starting to realize how good this. Well, I'm not so sure they know how good this team is. They are so good, no one knows how good they are. Pitch is outside two balls and two strikes. The Yankees have had some uh, heartbreaking playoff losses in recent years to Seattle and Cleveland. So they know that they have a lot more road to hold before they breathe easy despite their incredible record this year. Here's the 2 2 pitch and he checks the swing It breaks just 
low and away and the count is full three balls and two strikes. Well the crowd wanted that pitch that was a good call by Dale Ford that ball was below the strike zone but awful tough pitch to lay off of especially when you've struck out three times on balls very similar to that this evening. Three and two one out bases empty. Ball four and Gonzalez draws the walk and that'll bring the tying run to the plate. And Joe Torrey is out of the dugout and that will be all. For El Duque and uh, Joe Torrey not going to take any chances here. Looking to the bullpen. And that's it. Listen to the ovation that El Duque is going to get when he comes off the mound. He struck out 13. He has allowed only two hits. But Joe Torrey wants to wrap up the game. Now here comes Rivera bouncing out of that bullpen. But Joe Torrey went one hitter at a time. Listen to this crowd. They love this guy. So Orlando Hernandez in a sterling effort tonight for the New York Yankees leaves the game after pitching eight and a third innings. He walked Gonzalez and he's removed from Mariano Rivera. Here he is tipping his cap after 13 strikeouts two nothing the score but the tying run coming to the plate 13 strikeouts a Yankee rookie record and Will Clark coming up to face Mariano Rivera. Who has 30 saves on the season? Clark struck out, walked, and grounded out to Martinez at first base. But that was against El Duque, now facing Rivera. And you're going to see a different type pitcher. This guy is a high fastball pitcher up in the strike zone. Ball one inside. He's converted his last 20 consecutive save opportunities. You know when you talk about we were trying to talk about the whole game about what El Duque did where he releases the ball from all angles. Rivera comes out of a high position with his arm all the time with a rising fastball. Rounded foul. Let's take a closer look at uh, what we can expect from Rivera. Well he's got a fastball that gets it up there in the high 90s. I mean he really throws it hard. He's got a hard slider if he needs it. A split finger. His delivery is very very smooth. And that allows the ball to look even faster than it is coming to the plate. But he does pitch up in the strike zone. And that was a fastball right down the middle. Fly ball. Curtis going over but can't reach it. It's out of play. It's amazing. He, he's not very big. He's real lean. He's only 6'2", about 170 pounds. But his delivery is so smooth that when he delivers the ball, the ball flies out of his hand. He can lull a hitter to sleep with his delivery. So now when the ball gets to the hitter it's almost like right at the end it has a little extra giddy up right as it gets in the hitting zone. Gonzalez with the lead at first two to nothing Yankees and a fly ball to left field Curtis camping under it and Curtis makes the catch for out number two and the Texas Rangers are down to their last out but they've got a tough customer at the plate in Pudge Rodriguez. But uh, Rivera got a dangerous hitter in Clark. A left handed hitter and now facing Rodriguez who is 0 for 3 tonight. Striking out twice against Hernandez. Now we were talking about how Rivera has a good live arm. He doesn't look like he's really popping the ball right now. Those balls were more down in the strike zone. But Pudge Rodriguez is a good high ball hitter. And the ground ball is shortstop. This could be it. Jeter. On the first base and the ball game is over. And the New York Yankees keep it rolling. They have won their eighth in a row and now have gone 59 games over 500 at an incredible record of 88 and 29. And tonight you can tip your hat to El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, who struck out 13, allowing only two hits and a 2 0 Yankee win. And our MCI plays of the game, it's El Duque, Jeff. It sure is 13 times it's El Duque. You can watch him throw with a breaking ball. A downer breaking ball from all angles a sidearm fastball. 
He just was dominating the night. It didn't matter where he threw the ball. He threw it by him. He threw it around him. He fooled him. 13 times our play of the game. What a masterful performance. Uh, you mentioned it earlier about a new Yankee strikeout record for a rookie pitcher, and he's gotten it with 13 tonight, breaking Stan Bonson's record. Remember, you're talking about an organization with great tradition. And That's really doing something. He got Gonzalez three times. He got just about everybody, and 8-3, and three, the record for El Duque. And that was number 13. Helling pitched well in defeat, losing 15-7. and seven. Rivera, his 31st save as the Yankees... Now have won eight in a row and are 59 games over 500. So that's it from Yankee Stadium in New York. Tune in Saturday for Fox Saturday Baseball when the Texas Rangers take on the Yankees as this series continues plus other regional action. Coverage begins at 12.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Then move over to FX Baseball Saturday night. The Pirates take on the Cardinals at 8 o'clock. Eastern on FX. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Baseball Thursday continues next week here on Fox Sports when you'll see the Yankees against the Twins or the Tigers take on the Angels. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Fox Sports News primetime is next in many areas. So for Jeff Torborg, I'm Dick Stockton. Once again, the final score, the Yankees two, the Rangers nothing. You've been watching Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports. Sports Net, another Yankee win. So long, everybody.